my name is Jan Geisler. I'm a patient advocate now for 15 years. I've been diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia in 2001. And at that time, uh, diagnosis really looked grim in the outlook. And I joined a phase one and two clinical trial at that time, getting two investigational drugs. So research was actually part of my, my very first patient journey at that time. And that is also the reason why I was so interested in research. And I became a patient advocate by trying to understand what was going on in research and trying to translate that into patient language that other patients in Germany that couldn't understand uh, what was published in English also had the chance to understand their um, uh, different option treatment options which they have. And over the years, um, I mean, I've been deeply involved in, in research, protocol review of, of clinical trials, informed consent documents, communication about research and so on. So from, from being a, um, an individual with cancer, I developed into being an advocate for patients to get, give them access to information about research. And that has basically followed me over the past 15 years uh, since I was diagnosed with cancer. And in that, uh, I also was involved in developing the roadmap uh, on uh, patient involvement in R&D because uh, we know that patient organizations, especially in HIV, have been involved for 20 years in research, while in cancer this is much more a newer thing. Um, but uh, it was not on a systematic level because there was no system how industry and academic researchers and regulators and so on could involve patients and that's why we designed the roadmap really to understand all the different steps across the whole medicines development chain um, where patients can be involved and how they can be involved. I actually have to have two roles. Uh, my main role, my professional role is being director of the European Patients Academy which is a five-year project and it's been one of the most exciting things I've been doing in my time as a patient advocate because we really, what I had to learn very hard as a patient advocate by in learning by doing, we're teaching patients and patient advocates how to get involved in, in R&D in a very systematic level. And at the same time, I'm still engaged as a patient advocate. I'm one of the co-founders and leaders of a worldwide network of 109 patient organizations in 82 countries in leukemia because I still do the work on the ground. I still am involved in research design and in working with researchers to do better research for patients. So I actually have two roles as a volunteer and as a professional. When we started in 2012, the project was, let's say, something, it was pioneering um, that in a public-private partnership model, all actors in research and development were actually starting to collaborate. And at that time, it was really a lot of about us and them. So industry thought what patient organizations are like, patient organizations thought what industries like, academia was thinking, what patients should learn about R&D. So it was very much everybody was still in their silos. And I think over time, we have known that not only developed this project um, to be very successful in educating about 100 patient experts and uh, now about 40,000 people who have used our online toolbox in seven languages. But it has also broken down the silos. Today we're working together as, as a team. Everybody has interests, everybody has a different background. And I think that's the great thing about it. And I think even when this project ends, um, this kind of partnership and understanding for the interests and the strengths and the weaknesses of each stakeholder will uh, continue and I think will make a, it has, has made a major change to R&D, how R&D is conducted. When we started in 2012, patient involvement in R&D was done somewhere, but there was no public debate about it. Today, everybody's discussing about it at medical conferences, in industry forums, in academic research groups, in regulators, in policy, uh, on the European, on the national level. Today, this is let's say, discussed everywhere. And I think EU Party, the European Patients Academy, has had a major part in getting that debate and that collaboration started. So we had five years of public funding and uh, private funding to run this project as a publicly founded consortium. And uh, from the beginning, we had one work package uh, focused on sustainability because it was clear this project will be a game changer, it will be something that builds the academy, that builds a course, that builds the toolbox, but the exploitation, the use will come when everything has been developed. 
So we've been working very hard and we can now really say proudly that this program will continue in 2017. So it will be run as a patient-led program in EPF with the spirit of a public-private partnership with all the partners involved and it will continue to run the course because at the moment, I mean we've trained 98 uh, patient advocates over two years but there are more than 5,000 rare diseases, there are more than 200 cancers, there are so many different uh, other chronic conditions. We need a patient advocate in the end in every kind of disease, so uh, the course needs to continue, the toolbox needs to be provided. We need to continuously update it because uh, the, the regulation is changing with the clinical trials regulation coming into effect very soon. So we need to continue our mission and we've, uh, made, the, uh, we've made the groundwork now so UPATI will continue as a very strong uh, initiative, maybe even institution from next year when this first funding phase ends. For me, it's just the first phase of a continuous effort to strengthen patients in R&D. It is the first time I as a patient advocate experience that diabetes people work with oncology, people work with rare disease people, that we get this cross-link between the experience in HIV, the pioneering spirit of the rare disease groups, uh, let's say the experience of the oncology groups uh, because it's one of the largest uh, problems in society uh, with cancer. All these advocates working together on a professional level, sharing best practice, that's one of the most amazing things which I haven't seen in, in advocacy as well because we also tend to work in silos, in our own diseases, in our own medical communities and I think EOPATI has really changed that to get everyone working together across diseases also on the advocacy level, that's amazing.